I'm Barry Johnson from Solar Twin, Solar Heating Innovator. I'd like to tell you about a new thermochromic collector that we've invented. Not sure yet if it's going to go in the market, but let's see. The presentation is in three parts. A picture is about the prototype, and then theory on 11 ways to control overheating, and then some other innovations that are happening at Solar Twin. What we've developed as a prototype is a thermochromic solar collector. At the front is a thermochromic one which goes pale when it gets hot. Instead of being black and absorbing heat, it reflects it. I've shown you the picture of it halfway through transition. When it gets really, really hot, it goes white. So we've got a sort of greyish one there. So what? Currently, there's a problem in the solar heating industry, and it's a big problem in that you can't put maybe three, four square metres or more of solar collectors on a normal UK size 120 litre hot water store without the thing boiling somewhere somehow in the summer. What we're trying to create is what's called a thermal step change solar collector. Once it gets above the temperature of usefulness, over about 70 or 80 Celsius, it shuts down. We've got a paint on this solar collector which is black when it's cool, but by the time it reaches 80 degrees or 90 degrees Celsius it's white. White things reflect heat, black ones absorb it. So what we've got is a solar reflector collector. It collects when it's cool, it reflects when it's too hot. You can put loads and loads of solar collectors on an existing hot water store and not be worried about boiling and all the safety issues that go with that. I think it's going to revolutionise solar if we can get through the commercial and technical hurdles. One of the commercial ones is it's expensive. So that's the thermochromic prototype. We don't know if it's going to hit the market yet. It's about one third probability that it will. Moving on now to the theory. I've collected, and you tell me if there are more, 11 ways that you can reduce peak temperature in solar collectors. Here they are. You can export heat. Collect it in the middle of the day when the sun is very bright and dump it in the evening. And that's what solar twin does. Number two, you use a dark heat transfer fluid and a transparent collector, and that's been experimented with in Portugal. Number three, the conventional approach, collect the heat but dump it via a radiator or down the drain. Not very elegant, but can be done. Number four is a refinement of this, dump it underground and maybe use it up again in the winter. Number five is where you actually have evaporative cooling. Imagine if you lick the back of your hand and blow on it, it's cool. You can do the same thing with a solar collector by having a wetted pad on the back, and I've talked to academics who have proven this system, but I haven't seen it on the market yet. Six, seven, eight, ventilate the collector above a certain temperature. Some suppliers do that. Or you can simply remove the fluid behind a specially shaped front glazing, which is shaped like the back of a bicycle reflector. If you fill in the gap behind a bicycle reflector, and you'll probably see that it's got little pyramids on it. If you fill that with water, it becomes, instead of reflective, it becomes transparent. You can control the reflectiveness of specially shaped glazing by doing this and there's a patent on this. You can also use simple mechanical shading devices. Put a blind over the system. These are all mechanical systems which, in theory, may eventually be unreliable. So the non-mechanical ones are really neat, and I've only identified three so far. There's one that's called electrochromics or thermochromics, and that's what we're doing. We're thermochromically changing a collector from dark to light when it gets too hot. There's another one where the coating drops in selectivity when it becomes too hot, and there's an 11 where the glazing becomes opaque or non-transparent when it gets too hot. So there are lots of ways, in theory, that solar collectors can get rid of excess heat. And what Solar Twin is currently doing, number one right now, number nine as a project. Moving wider to some of the innovations that Solar Twin have done, we've won awards, here's Kingsway Primary School in England. We've been innovating in a whole range of different ways. We've got rid of antifreeze and we've got a freeze-tolerant collector. It's got silicone rubber pipes in the collector and to and from it. It's also got a zero-carbon system, which is 100% solar electric pumped, and it's controlled by a 100% solar-powered solar controller. The technology of solar twin? Well, it's very simple. It's a flat plate collector made of polymers and metals containing water at low pressures, contained in a silicone polymer pipe, and the pump energy comes from photovoltaics through a variable speed pump. It's very low flow, about a quarter of a litre per square metre per minute peak. The water is delivered not through a heat exchanger, but directly to the top of the store. Diagrams are coming up in a minute. And water stratification is therefore excellent. The glazing is polycarbonate. The absorber coating is matte black, so you can dump heat with infrared emissions if you want to. That's how we do the overheat control. Here's an example of a solar twin installation that's done in UK. A retrofit to an existing hot water cylinder, where the pipes go to a small pump to the panel and back, and the hot water stratifies on the cold in the hot water store. Here's a thermal store installation, which is commonly done as well. That has a volume of water which goes to and from the silver twin from now until eternity, and you don't bath in that. And the heat is taken out through a giant heat exchanger, which comes in with mains cold water, and then comes out via a blender valve, having taken the heat from the stored water. 
it's time to start using Silver Twin. Thanks for taking an interest in our thermochromic panel. This is Barry Johnson at Solar Twin.